I was searching through the internet for bus parts and it turns out that a front bumper costs more than I'm willing to spend. So it's time to get the old bumper out of storage and get it restored. I'm currently working on removing all the rust on this bus from the front to the back so it seemed like a good time to get the bumper bent back into shape and ready for painting. This bumper holds a lot of memories for me, especially these holes that were drilled out for these ghetto tow hooks. Ah, feels like just yesterday we pulled this bus out of a backyard with my old Civic. But since then, I've welded in an actual replacement tow hook so we can say goodbye to the old ring and move on to patching the holes in the bumper. The first step I'm going to take is removing all the old paint so I could get down to removing any rust and welding in patches for the holes. I will be attempting to use this crappy paint stripper since I have it on hand and it's better than throwing it away. And I let it sit for about an hour. As expected, after sitting for over an hour, the main thing that this paint stripper did is make my front yard smell terrible. But we're gonna put some on the inside anyways. <laughs> yeah, boy. While the paint stripper sits in the bumper, we'll be moving on to smoothing out the dents and weld seams on the side of the bus. This epoxy was sprayed only about a day ago, so its chemical adhesion window is still open, but I'll be scuffing it up with a red scotch bright to promote further adhesion and smooth out any orange peel that may have occurred from spraying it. For the patches, I will be using Duraglass Fiber Reinforced Filler. I prefer this stuff over Bondo for the initial patching step as it's a lot more resilient than regular Bondo and it will resist cracking better in any of the deeper areas. You will see later in the video that this stuff dries hard and it's definitely not easily sandable like regular Bondo, so be careful. If you're enjoying the content so far, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below. I read each and every one of them and I do appreciate it. For the initial sanding of the filler, I like to do it with an orbital sander because there's no way that you're going to be able to sand this down by hand. If you've never used this stuff before, it's easy to underestimate how hard it really dries. I'm using an electrical orbital sander because I don't have a compressor that's big enough to supply a pneumatic sander and put my phone on silent, huh? And this turned out to be a bit of an issue as the sander was getting pretty hot from all the use and well, eventually it kind of fell apart. So I decided it'd be a good time to blow the dust out of the garage and take a little break and head over to Harbor Freight. At Harbor Freight, I picked up this reasonably priced orbital sander and well, it looks decent. I mean, it looks Chinese, but it has this adjustment where you could actually control the speed of sanding. And this turned out to be quite useful. I actually like the sander a bit more than my Ryobi one, but only time will tell how long this thing's really gonna last. Ah, what a beautiful day for your paint stripper to do absolutely nothing. So it was time to get the carbide disc out, a bunch of different wire wheels and all kinds of stuff, and well, let's get all the paint and rust off of this thing. 
Now obviously this would all be so much easier with a sandblaster, so I don't want to hear it in the comments. I don't have a sandblaster. I feel like most normal people don't have sandblasters, so those people like me that don't have sandblasters, well this is what we have to do. So don't look down upon us, those who don't have sandblasters, but rather admire us for the hard work we put in to get rid of rust and paint by hand. And using Osfo, I was able to remove a lot of rust. I would spray the Osfo on, I would use my wire wheel and grind the rust down, spray the Osfo again. If you see black pitting, that means there's still rust. Wire wheel it again, Osfo, wire wheel, and well, eventually you're left with a pretty decent rust free surface. Mallory got me without even asking. Oh my gosh, you have like a sweat. Wow. You better take care of those. Take care of them, they're for work. Now that the rust is dealt with, we can rinse it off with some water to make sure that there's no paint strip or anything left on the metal. Take it inside and get to work. Now, did you really think I was going to record this all ASMR style? Who do you think I am? Brandon's bus? So you should check out his channel because he makes some awesome videos and awesome shorts. But as you can see, I was getting the dents in the bumper pretty smooth using the torch and hammer and dolly technique. Once again, I'm not very good at doing body work, so I'm learning. Don't judge me. I know there's people out there that are much better than me but it's all about learning. And what is it? Having fun. And yes, I'm having a lot of fun. And I also have to make some patches to patch up those holes where the ghetto tow bar was. And I used some metal that was of a very similar thickness. Creating a circular patch isn't ideal, but I really didn't want to cut into the bumper any more than I had to. And using a flappy disk, it's not that difficult to make a circular patch. As you can see, this one fit pretty darn good. Now I still need to coat this bumper in some epoxy primer and respray the side of the bus where I sanded down the filler, but unfortunately we are running out of time in this episode. So if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.